what the two met about yesterday and what actually got done at that meeting. And then this is the story that I think is, it's blasphemous, honestly. How can you go to a movie theater and not have the ability to buy popcorn, right? It's like peanut butter and jelly, macaroni and cheese, movie theaters and popcorn. Nope. Movie theaters say there could be a popcorn shortage this summer. I'll tell you why. Let's get into some of the stories coming out of the KFI 24-hour newsroom. California Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff has proposed a plan to cut gas prices. Congressman Schiff says gas prices above six dollars a gallon are common in California. Hundreds of dollars a month that people are having to spend just to get to their jobs. Schiff's legislation would give people a break from the federal gas tax until the end of 2023. He says big oil companies would make up the tax money by paying a 50 percent tax on what he defines as excess profit. Schiff says gas prices have risen from the invasion of Ukraine, supply chain issues, and price gouging by big oil companies. In Atwater Village, Blake Trolley, KFI News. A man and woman in San Bernardino County have been arrested for abusing and torturing five kids for years. It is amazing to me how many of these stories we end up talking about. They are getting uh, fewer and less far between. Now, in this case, officials say a man has also been charged with a count of terrorism. The couple was arrested last week in a month-long investigation. They say the family members, who were 11 to 17 years old, who are, check this out, branded, strangled, and shot with pellet guns. L.A. County Sheriff's deputies have raided 278 illegal pot farms in the Antelope Valley. Sheriff Ian Nueva says they also grabbed 150 vehicles and 17 water trucks. From May 17th through the 27th, they also seized $1.4 billion worth of marijuana plants. Something we came across new, booby traps. They're buried, and this is a public road out in the high desert, one of the dirt roads. And apparently at 30 sites, we found these type of booby traps. The Inuita says during the nine-day operation, 105 people were arrested, and they seized 40 firearms, including 11 ghost guns. At the Hall of Justice, Steve Gregory, KFI News. All right, those new rules on outdoor watering have gone into effect for people in L.A. So this is a two-day-per-week outdoor watering schedule that's based on your street address, self-conserved water during the drought. So watering is permitted on odd-numbered street addresses on Mondays and Fridays, and at the even-numbered addresses on Thursdays and Sundays. Watering with sprinklers is limited to 8 minutes per station. Sprinklers with water-conserving nozzles are limited to 15 minutes per station. And all watering must be done in the evening or early morning with no watering allowed outdoors between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. A car has crashed into the backyard of a home in Laverne, killing the driver. It happened shortly before 9.30 in the morning yesterday. The car exploded into flames when it hit the back wall of the home. The CHP says it received at least two calls about the car going over the posted speed limit in the area. Well, comedian Bill Cosby is expected to give opening statements in a sexual assault trial involving a woman from Riverside County. The woman says Cosby allegedly sexually abused her when she was a minor at the Playboy Mansion in the 70s. This is the first civil suit against Cosby to actually come up with a trial. Well, the police departments for Uvalde, Texas, and the town school district have stopped cooperating with the state investigation into the response into last week's deadly shooting. The move was in response to the Texas Department of Public Safety's director's comments to the media that the decision to l delay the entrance into the classroom where the shooter killed 19 kids and two teachers was the wrong decision. And both parents and the grandma of the Texas school shooter had criminal records. According to Uvalde County court records obtained by the New York Post, their crimes included aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and trying to pass a fake check. Right, when we come back, we are going to talk, hopefully, with ABC's Karen Travers. Apparently, we're having a little difficulty. Oh, we got her there. We'll talk with her in just a second. But right now, let's say good morning to Nick Pagliocchini and find out more about the, why it's slow on the 215. Good morning, Jenny. It's just the usual slowing to start things out for your morning drive. Nothing in lanes, but Marina Valley, 215 North. You will see delays as you're coming away from about eucalyptus past the merge of the 60 as toward UCRN beyond the riverside and interchange. Also still going for you if you're Corona, nothing in lanes, but heavy for you right now from me. Street just past the 15th. 
as you make your way toward about Surface Club, loosens up beyond that. Uh, it's just kind of light and patchy, barely there delays as you continue toward the 241 toll road, at least for the time being. If you're encountering otherwise or something is slowing you down, pound your 15 or cell phone. Keyword is KFI traffic. I uh, always appreciate that heads up on your morning drive. Westbound side of the 210, 10 and 60 so far through the Inland Empire, off the 15. Beyond the 57, as you make way through the SGV San Gabriel Valley, looks like a pretty solid drive, nothing major slowing you down there. As you make way through Orange County, it looks pretty good, although earlier problems on the southbound side of the 5, not too far from a Jeffrey in the Irvine area. Looks like it's an earlier problem that has been cleared to the right shoulder, 5 southbound again, right around Jeffrey. KFI and the Sky Helps get there faster. I'm Nick Pauley O'Keefe. 505 on your wake-up call. Karen Travers, good morning to you. So the president met up with the Fed chairman, and what was the topic du jour? Yeah, inflation. Uh, fighting an inflation-fighting strategy. And this is, of course, one of the big issues for the administration right now. And the president said yesterday that his plan to fight inflation starts with what he calls a simple composition, respecting the Fed's independence, which he says he has done and will continue to do. And the president said not interfering with what he calls the Fed's critically important work. But he said Jerome Powell and the other leaders there have uh, the same laser focus on addressing inflation just like he has. And essentially, this is an endorsement of what could be a series of interest rate hikes that are intended to get a handle on in price increases, you know, the inflation right now. So that's uh, kind of a little bit of political cover for the, the Fed, but also uh, uh, showing that the president, there's only so much he can do. It's going to have to be coming from the central bank, and this is a problem that governments, countries all around the world are dealing with right now. You keep hearing this from the administration, and this is not a uniquely American issue at this point. Inflation is happening all over the world. But for the White House, they're having a hard time trying to show that they can do something to get this under control because they are running out of options and they don't have many great options. So what's for the next couple of weeks for the administration to try and count what they say are good things in the economy, the low unemployment rate, high job creation. You can hear the president on Friday talking about the May jobs report. But as you head into the midterm election season, it's really it's already underway. It's hard for Americans who are paying so much uh, for gas and food and other everyday items. It's hard, I think, for them to look at the big picture things on the economy when everyday stuff just costs a lot more. Well, yeah, and I think, too, because initially you had the Fed and the White House sort of portraying inflation, the surge, as sort of a temporary side effect caused by the supply chain issue. And I think initially you can swallow that, but then when it keeps going on and getting worse, that's when Americans start going, hey, wait a minute, what's going on here? Yeah, and you know, they'll say it's still because of all of that, that this is still related to COVID shutdowns and supply chain disruptions, and that it was worse than they realized back then, and that the bounce back is going to take longer. It's more you know, deep-rooted than they anticipated or realized at the time. They'll also say this is because of the war in Ukraine and that the ripple effects of gas, uh, it, of course, but also the food uh, prices are going up because of wheat and grain. That's a significant issue, too. Now, of course, you say, well, wait, the old prices were going up throughout 2021. That was long before Russia invaded Ukraine, and that's the thing that keeps coming up at the White House briefing. And they'll say, yes, but things have been exacerbated since the beginning of this year. Got it. Karen, thank you so much for your time. We'll talk again soon. Have a great day. Thanks. You too. See you later. That's ABC's Karen Travers. And I think that optically, the president, even though he's right, he doesn't have a lot to do with, I mean, he doesn't have a lot of power when it comes to uh, what can be done in the short term regarding inflation. Um, but he had to make it look like he understood, you know, what we're going through. The gas prices, the food prices, that sort of thing. And so it had to show that he and Chairman Powell were at least in lockstep in the sense of they were attempting to do something. And I, I'm not saying, I'm not uh, minimizing that they were attempting to do something. I'm just saying that he kind of had to do that. I think it, it was important for him to do that to make it look like at least I'm trying. Let's get back to some of these stories coming out of the KFI 24 hour newsroom. Speaking of the president, he says he'll send more advanced rockets that Ukraine has been asking for. ABC's Andy Field says Russia warned it could have a major escalation if the U.S. gave Ukraine rockets that could strike inside Russia. 
Now the U.S. is providing those more powerful weapons, but saying they're only to help strike key Russian targets inside Ukraine. However, it's not clear what would stop Ukraine from extending those weapons to hit Russians in their own country. Germany's chancellor has announced his country will send modern anti-aircraft missiles and radar systems to Ukraine. Well, an infectious disease doctor at Cedar sinai Tarzana Medical Center says COVID-19 at-home tests are not as reliable as they once were. Dr. Jeff Galpin said they're probably 60% accurate, but there is not enough data to confirm that. Doctors say people who test positive at home need to stay home even if they feel okay. He says antigen tests only detect the virus when it's contagious. The Justice Department has asked a federal appeals court to overturn a judge's ruling in April that the mask mandate on planes, trains, and buses was unlawful. The DOJ made the request yesterday. The DOJ is appealing the decision after the CDC said the mask mandate was necessary to protect public health. A Marine veteran from Whittier has pleaded guilty to leading a team that helped arm the Mexican cartel. KFI's Blake Trolley says police recovered some of the weapons. Police say they seized six assault rifles, more than 250,000 rounds of ammo, gun parts, and kits to build machine guns capable of firing up to 6,000 rounds per minute. Investigators say the cartel is known to target rival gangs, innocent people, and police. The ringleader is set to be sentenced in August. Oh my gosh, Disneyland has suspended the sale of its Magic Key annual pass program. However, it is offering people who live in California a three-day, one-park-per-day ticket for Disneyland and Disney California Adventure this summer. The park says current Dream Key holders can still use their passes to make reservations, and they will be permitted to renew their passes. This was very cool. I don't know if you saw the pictures, but it was just neat to see more than 600 students just scouring the beaches in Huntington Beach for plastic, styrofoam, straws, and balloons. The student from Eisenhower Elementary School in Garden Grove graphically explains his mission to save the birds. People think that plastic are a food for them, and they, they just keep on eating it. And then, like, the stomach are full of plastic, and then they have to decompose in, like, the dead bodies everywhere. Oh, oh, wow. But good for that kid for knowing that their tummies get full of plastic. Thousands of students statewide picked up trash for Kids Beach Day yesterday for the first time since 2019 because of COVID-19. The program aims to help underserved kids get to the beach. A lawmaker representing Fullerton is pushing a bill that would train hundreds of young people to be ready for another oil spill. Senator Josh Newman says more than 10,000 people helped with the oil spill last year, but most were not trained. The California Ocean Corporation has created a resource that protects the coast uh, and in so doing provides workforce experience and opportunities to young people that want to participate directly in this effort. Newman says the California Ocean Corps, as they would call it, would also restore coastal watersheds, protect public access to beaches, and respond to extreme weather events. The bill is passed the Senate and heads to the Assembly. Officials in Florida have captured an alligator they say killed a man. The Largo Police Department says the man's body was found in a lake yesterday. The this man lives near that lake and says despite the many warning signs posted around it, he sees people going in. I'm not surprised at all. Sad to say that. But, you know, Floridians believe that, you know, if they're invincible. They go in the water, they swim, and a gator's a gator. It's not your friend. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission says only 26 alligator attacks have been recorded since it started keeping records in 1948. And here is the worst story of the morning that I have for you, she said, tongue in cheek. Sound like popcorn? Popping it at home? You might have to pop it at home, people, because movie theaters say there could be a popcorn and concession shortage this summer. Officials from a popcorn supplier told the Wall Street Journal the snack distribution will be tight because of supply chain issues and inflation. Mr. President and Fed Chairman Jerome Powell focused on that yesterday specifically. I think they were like gas prices, grocery prices, but movie popcorn. Movie theater chains also say they have had trouble restocking certain soda flavors and snack containers. I feel like we've drawn the line. Six dollar a gallon gas, well... You know, prices going up at the grocery store. But come on now, no popcorn at the movie theaters. That's my line in the sand.
Great, right, we come back, we're going to talk tech with KTLA's tech reporter Rich Tamaro. More on the Supreme Court blocking a law in Texas that was supposed to stop censor, censor, <laughs> censorship. Also, Rich got to go into the first Amazon clothing store in Glendale, and I thought this was so funny. He says the fitting rooms are really unique, so we'll get into that in a second. Nick Pagliocchini is always slow on the 91. Why? Yeah, yeah, let me tell you, Jen, if I had a reason or an answer to that ever, I would gladly pass along, but it's going to be a busy one in stretches right now. For the West Ham community, uh, Riverside to Corona is going to be that first morning uh, delay that you're seeing from Magnolia as you make your way all the way toward the 241 toll road. Just light and patchy, nothing in lanes, just your usual. Marina Valley 215 North, same story for your drive here. Going to be still going from Alessandro to pass the road to the 60 toward the UCR and beyond to the Riverside Interchange. KFI and the Sky helps get to there faster. I'm Nick Pagliocchini. Even working two jobs, it was hard to feed my kids while schools were closed during the pandemic. They usually get three meals of school, but now they were home, and my grocery bill went up a lot. PBT has made a big difference for us. Over five million California children are getting the food they need thanks to PBT. Visit ca.p-ebt.org today to learn more about eligibility. Funded by USDAP, an equal opportunity provider and employer, aired by the California Broadcast Association. This report is sponsored by Whole Foods Market. Save for Taco Night at Whole Foods Market. Get Animal Welfare Certified 90% Lean Ground Beef for $5.49 a pound through June 7th while supplies last. Plus, prime members save an extra 10%. Learn more on the Whole Foods Market. Hey, this is Lincoln Kennedy, three-time Pro Bowler. Here's what's trending on the iHeart Sports Network. Listen in sideline says the Badgers almost fed out of an early four-run hole, but they dropped another close game to the Pirates. The Dodgers send right-hander Mitch White to the mound tonight. The Yankees lost to the Yankees to start their road trip. They've now lost six straight and will try to snap that streak later today. The Yankees send left-hander Reed Dallas to the mound. Rafi on the doll down to Mike Djokovic in a four-set thriller to advance the French Open semifinal. I'm Missy Jordan. Do you need new blinds or shades? Blindster offers custom-made blind shades and shutters shipped directly to you at prices less than big box retailers. Visit Blindster.com now to save 50% off during their Memorial Day sale. Sale ends soon, so shop today. Blindster.com. Hey, kiddo. Wait, you catch that move? Almost. Yeah, he's turned. He's Matt. Yep. All set. Matt. It's not required, is it? No, but it's going to be busy and crowded, so I'll feel better with it on. Keep right. It is open at night. Let me grab mine. Nice! You passed the vodka, Dad! <laughs> <laughs> Wearing a mask when it can help protect you and others is just one way to keep each other safer. Brought to you by the California Department of Public Health. Here's to the great American settlers. The millions of you who settled for unsatisfying jobs because they paid the bills. Of course, there is something else you could do if you got something to say. Start a podcast with Spreaker from iHeart and unleash your creative freedom. Maybe even earn enough money to one day tell your old boss, Hey, I'm no settler. I'm an explorer. Spreaker.com. S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. Hustle -E -E on over today. Baseball and fireworks. A match made in blue heaven. Start your weekend off with a bang on Friday, June 3rd, when the Dodgers face the match at 710. After the game, enjoy Friday Night Fireworks presented by UCLA House. Visit Dodgers.com slash promotion. If you've listened to Handle on the Law for any length of time, you'll notice that I have never recommended a Lemon Law lawyer. Never found one I'm comfortable with until now. So let me introduce you to the Knight Law Group. If you've bought or leased a car and gone back repeatedly for a car repair, to no avail, you may have a lemon on your hands. And you have rights under the California Lemon Law. Every year, car manufacturers produce and sell cars that have real problems, and you're stuck with them. Well, you can actually do something about it now. Call the Knight Law Group. They can help you get rid of your lemon and get your money back. And you don't pay anything out of pocket. Call for a free consultation. Call the Knight Law Group at 844-43-LEMON. 844-43-LEMON or visit nightlaw.com that's not with a K nightlaw.com Pink Throat Person Every case is different Results daily Courtesy of Roger Kuna Night Law Group LLP Contact your office 10 I hate it during the walk train Don't waste your time on that grocery store level Call me Wacky Wacky The drain opening the kitchen I'm a few charge $80 if we could open it with a 30-foot grocery store I'll offer you that work about nine times out of ten. What about that test time? That's when the magic happens. Tell me. I'd love to, but I wasted all 
all the time talking about grocery store lists. Don't waste your time on grocery store lists. Oh, exactly. Yeah, really? TPL.com. The monkey pod. All right. The World Health Organization is a whole emergency monkey pod eating. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's not funny. It's not funny. Oh, that's good. 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 Oh, Okay, funny, Gary and Shannon, we're talking about monkey box, or not funny, as Gary said, because coming up at 535, we're going to talk with infectious disease doctor Simone Wilde, and I want to try and answer your monkey pox questions via her, because, like Gary said, it, it is still with the headlines, and it seems like such a big thing, but it's so few and far between. How bad really is it? How concerned do we really have to be? So we'll get into that, and also we'll talk about this weird mystery hepatitis illness that's impacting a lot of kids. So we've got a lot to squeeze in at 5.35 with Dr. Simone Wilde. Some of the other top stories we're watching, a big story. A teenager has been arrested for sending threats about an explosive device to a high school in Baldwin Park. The arrest happened yesterday. Police say they checked out Sierra Vista High School last week because staff received an email threat. Officials say the school ramped up security last week and this week, but staff are also checking bags now before students can enter the building. And there's a school in Santa Ana that also got a credible threat that said, you know what? We are not going to play. We are just closing for the rest of the week because of this credible threat. Officials at Modern Day High School say they learned about the threat yesterday and take all threats made to the school seriously. Santa Ana police also responded. Police say protocols have been implemented. Right now, let's talk tech with KCLA tech reporter Rich Demuro. You can follow him on social media at Rich on Tech, and his website is richontech.tv. Rich, good morning. Good morning, to you, sir. Hey, so let's start with some news that just broke this morning regarding Instagram and Amber Alerts. Yeah, that's a pretty big deal. Uh, so Instagram is going to add Amber Alerts to their platform, and this is going to be critical for finding um, children that are found missing. Because the big difference here, unlike those text alerts you get, this will have a picture. And if you grew up in the 80s and the 90s like myself, you remember that they always had a missing child picture on the back of a milk carton. Right. It's become sort of a, you know, a TV thing now, you know, where you see like, these TV shows and it's sort of central to the plot, right? Uh, but Instagram is where people are. I think that this is a, a very, very smart thing for them to do. They're going to show you to people based on your location, the city on your profile, and your IP address. I love the idea of the picture because sometimes you hear, um, I don't know, it's a little boy and he's three and he has brown hair and brown eyes. How in the world am I supposed to decide which kid that I look at who is three years old and has brown hair and brown eyes? How am I supposed to know that that's the kid we're looking for? Right, and this is also going to provide a direct link to local enforcement, like that, uh, sorry, local law enforcement. You can alert them. Uh, and so for, I mean, if this, if this finds one child, it is worth it. I mean, this is just such a smart thing to do because so many people are on this platform. Uh, kudos to Instagram for doing this. And people are scrolling all day anyway. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you're going to run across it. And, and what if you are? You're just running across it, whatever. You're coming out thinking about it. But the kid's picture pops up and you look at it for a half a second. And then you end up at the gas station down the street. And, oh, my God, there's the kid with, you know, whoever the person is who took them. I mean, that could, that, it could be that easy, you know? And, yeah. and, and you, hit that, you hit the nail on the head, then. So because this is localized, because this is based on your location, that's what makes this so smart. When you bought a milk carton back in the day, you know, it's for a wide swath of the entire state. This is literally in your area, so they can highly target people that may have seen this person or may know or may come across this person. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a great idea. I agree with you with the kudos to Instagram on that one. So let's talk a little bit about the law that came down yesterday, or the Supreme Court blockage, I guess, of that Texas law that was supposed to stop censorship. What happens now? Yeah, this is interesting. So, um, the Supreme Court basically blocked this Texas law. Texas argued that it would basically uh, prohibit large social media companies from blocking, banning, or promoting posts uh, that, you know, maybe they didn't agree with, or maybe, uh, you know, like people on the right feel like uh, social media is blocking conservative thoughts, and people on the left think that uh, social media will become too much of a hate platform if some of this stuff is allowed. 
So you're probably going to have a lot somewhere in the middle. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter obviously did not want any law that restricts their ability to censor stuff on their platform. But as these platforms, you kind of come.